something about your ancestors, as well as your state or country. I think that's right. Reading really improves your knowledge and enlarges your mind. So you don't act like a katak di bottom purong. Aha, born as a katak di bottom purong. I didn't say that. But it can happen to any one of us if we don't read. We become close-minded and ignorant of what's happening in the rest of the world. I love reading, especially about Harry Potter and his adventures. Yeah, me too, but let's get back to our discussion. Chandran, can you summarize the first part of the story? Okay. Once upon a time, there lived an old chief in this pleasant village who was about to die. He wanted to give some good advice to his three sons before he passed away. So he called them to his bedside and spoke to them. He told Galau the elders that he should not change, but always remain fair and just, and the family would prosper. What's prosper? That means to become rich or successful. To the second son, Omar, he said, You are a brave man, but sometimes hot-tempered, and ask him to be kind to the others. And to the youngest, Lutong, he said, You are sensible and fair. So help your brother, the new chief. Hey, I thought you hadn't read the story. No, all I asked was if you were doing that Bunga Telo story. But before I knew it, you girls were accusing me for all sorts of things. Jumping to wrong conclusions, as usual. Didn't it occur to you that I might have read both of the stories instead of just one, huh? Okay, I apologize. I was jumping the gun, I suppose. Well, where were we? Once upon a time, there lived an old chief in this pleasant village who was about to die. He wanted to give some good advice to his three sons before he passed away. Passed away. A nice way of saying someone had died. You are a brave man, but sometimes hot-tempered and ask him to be kind to the others. Hot-tempered. A person who gets angry easily. Jumping to wrong conclusions, as usual. Jumping to conclusions. An idiom meaning to judge or decide something without having all the facts. Jump the gun. To start ahead of everyone else. Okay, I apologize. I was jumping the gun, I suppose. Well, where were we? Well, the old chief had died and didn't leave an heir. There was an argument between the brothers as both Galau and Umar thought that they should be the next chief. I think Galau is right. After all, it was the custom in the village that the eldest son should succeed the father, and Galau is the eldest son. Yes, but there's some truth in what Umar says. No use electing a weak leader. A leader must be brave, strong, and good at making decisions. But remember, Umar is a very hot-tempered man, and that's not good quality for a leader to have. Yes, a leader shouldn't act hastily. He should be wise and consider all options before he acts. My vote is with Galau. As the elders said, Galau knows our laws and is very wise. I don't understand this part. See, it's in the middle of page 43. Custom. What use is that? Can you buy a pound of custom with 10 silver dollars? Umat was just mocking the system. Earlier on, Luton, the youngest brother, had said that it was the custom for the eldest son to succeed the father. Hence, Galau should be the new chief. And the meeting finally broke up because the people couldn't agree on whether Galau or Umar should be the new chief. I think I like Luton best. He seems to be the wisest one, always trying to find a peaceful solution. Uh, I hate to break up this animated discussion, but I have my scouts meeting. Can we continue tomorrow? There you go again. Oh, but it is quite late. Emma should be outside already. You want a ride? Okay, thanks. Go. I think Gala was right. After all, it was the custom in the village that the eldest son should succeed the father. Custom. Generally accepted practice or habit. Umar was just mocking the system. Mocking the system. To mock is a verb meaning to make fun of. Uh, I hate to break up this animated discussion, but I have my scouts meeting. Animated discussion. Anim
Affirmative is an adjective, meaning lively, enthusiastic. You know something? I wish to catch the tail end of this documentary on Sarawak on TV yesterday. And they showed some of the baskets made by the natives. They were really nice. Oh yes, each tribe actually has got special patterns and colours that they use. So you'll be able to tell where the baskets come from just by these distinguishing features. I especially like the baby carriers. They've got beads and feathers, and it's so cute to see the baby peeking out from the basket. And do you know why they do that? It's because the women take their children with them to the paddy fields and vegetable plots. So they need a harness to carry the baby in. Hi. Hey. Hey. My team trash yours. <laughs> That's because we let you. We have one player down, remember? What are you guys talking about? Football, I presume? Oh, wait a minute. Aren't you guys on the same team? Fat footies or something? It's fabulous, Jolie. Not fat. Yes, we play on the same team. But we support different teams. This is English soccer we're talking about. Yes, and you swear by Manchester United, don't you? And you, Chandran? The All Blacks? That's rugby. Don't you girls know anything? My team is Leeds United. Okay, okay. Settle down. I think we stopped at where the village couldn't decide on a new chief. Some wanted Galau, others Uman, and there was no peace. It's horrible when there's a fight in the family. I remember once, two of my aunties had an argument, and it was really odd at family gatherings. They wouldn't speak to each other and wanted the rest of the siblings to take sides. Yes, I agree. Okay, the village gets ready for war because they suspect that Umat has gone to meet with the enemies. They build a tall house with long stilts and trapdoors. But how could Umat do something like that? Go against his own people? Well, he wanted revenge, see, since he was an elected chief. He figured out that if he got the help of the enemies and won the war, he could proclaim himself as chief. That's so treacherous of him. So you'll be able to tell where the baskets come from just by these distinguishing features. Distinguishing features. Characteristics that make something different from the rest. So they need a harness to carry the baby in. Harness. A contraction or carrier to hold something. They wouldn't speak to each other and wanted the rest of the siblings to take sides. Siblings. Brothers and sisters. That's so treacherous of him. Treacherous. A person is treacherous when he betrays his friends or family. Umat, by siding with the enemies who attack his village, is treacherous. I think it was really clever when Gala told his men to cut the trees halfway through the trunks in anticipation of his enemies. But can you imagine all those men killed when the trees fall on them or drowned when they fell into the river? And dead bodies with flies buzzing all over them? Imagine the bloodshed and the destruction caused by the attack. What really struck me was how gracious Gala was when he heard Umat has died. He cried, even Umat betrayed the village. Yes, he could very well have gloated and said, serve him right. But no, he ordered a memorial pole to be carved in honour of his brother. What's a memorial pole? Is it like those totem poles carved by the Red Indians? Something similar, most tribes in Sarawak carve huge burial poles to honour their dead. They're usually decorated with intricate patterns and designs. So, that's why the place is called Dalat, which means flies in Milano. So that the people will remember the flies, the corpses, and the war between brothers, and not repeat it. Yes, it's a good lesson, but a very high price. Um, have you been uh, to a Milano taller house like this, Alina? They don't exist anymore. Although I've seen one at the Sarawak Cultural Village, it's similar to an Iban longhouse except that it's much higher and about three stories high. Since the Milano live by the coast, they were always afraid of pirate attacks. Do most tribes still live in longhouses in the interior? Yes, longhouses are a good way to keep safe. You know, safety in numbers, so that you could defend yourself better in case of an attack. But one tribe also has a roundhouse. A roundhouse? I've only heard of longhouses. Yes, it's quite unique. The Baroque or headhouse of the Bidayo people is round with an atap roof. 
This is where the elders meet to discuss issues and where festivals and ceremonies are held. There's so much of Sarawak that we never get to hear about. It's such a shame. So near but yet so far. Okay, let's see if you remember your history. When did Sarawak join Malaysia? 1950 or 59? No, 1960. Eh, wrong. In 1963, after a referendum, the people voted to join Malaysia. really clever when Galo told his men to cut the trees halfway through the trunks in anticipation of his enemies. In anticipation of, in readiness for. What really struck me was how gracious Galo was when he heard Umar has died. He cried. Gracious. Adjective meaning kind or well behaved. Yes, he could very well have gloated and said, serve him right. Gloated. Exhibit a feeling of superiority. Yes, it's a good lesson, but a very high price. A good lesson learned, but at a very high price. What does Chandra mean? Well, the villagers learned a good lesson, that brothers should not fight each other, but had to pay a high price in terms of the number of people that died and the property destroyed. Eh, wrong. In 1963, after a referendum, the people voted to join Malaysia. Referendum. An exercise in which the people vote on a particular issue. You do? Most certainly. The Sarawak Chamber, which is part of the Mulu case, can fit eight Boeing 747s nose to tail. Wow, that's impressive. You're like a walking history book, Alina, with all this knowledge at your fingertips. Well, I almost forgot. I have something to show you. I saw this in my dad's library and it's got fantastic pictures of Sarah. Okay. Um. See, this is the Baroque Round House that I was talking about. It's got this bird-like symbol on top. And here, Jolly, are some of the baskets and baby carriers. We talked about it earlier. Wow, they're so neat! There must be very interesting craft items in Sarawak. In fact, the Ibans are well known for their pokumbu, which is a kind of a special cloth. It's used for ritual ceremonies. Look, if you promise to look after the book, I'll lend it to you in turns, okay? Me first, I'll return it to you after the weekend. Then it's my turn. And mine. Thanks, Alina. You're a real sport. Yeah. Impressive. You're like a walking history book, Alina, with all this knowledge at your fingertips. Walking history book. Someone who knows a lot about history. Look, if you promise to look after the book, I'll lend it to you in turns, okay? Lend you in turns. Lend you the book, one after another. And mine. Thanks, Alina. You're a real sport. Yeah. You're a sport. You're a nice person. The book I lent you? Which one? The Hobbit? Yes. No, the book on Sarawak. Oh yes, I've I actually already passed it to Chandran. What? What? I didn't do anything. I'm blameless. It's amazing how far the son of one's name carries. Jolly was merely saying that she passed the book on Sarawak to you. What book? Never mind. Carry on with whatever you're doing. I found the book fascinating, Alina. There was this whole chapter on history, and it was all new to me. Did you know that it was ruled by the White Rajas before? I was pretty intrigued myself. I mean, there's a sport in Kuching named after a ruler's wife. But I never really knew the whole story until reading that book. Fort Margarita, right? It looks lovely in the picture when it's all lit up at night. And the other huge palace where the Sultan lives. The governor, you mean? We don't have a Sultan in Sarawak. You're talking about the Astana that used to be the palace of the White Rajas. It says that if you take a boat ride down the Sarawak River at night, it's quite a spectacular sight. All the buildings are lit up. Or if you just stand on the waterfront, you can get a good view of all these historical buildings. What? What? I didn't do anything. 
anything. I'm blameless. I'm blameless. I didn't do anything wrong. It's amazing how far the son of one's name carries. Jolly was merely saying that she passed the book on Sarawak to you. How far the son of one's name carries. People often pay attention when you mention their name. Chandran was very busy working on the computer. But as soon as Jolie mentioned his name, he immediately heard it. Hey girls, what's up? Hey. Hi. 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 Nothing much. We're just chatting about the land of the Hornbill. The what? Oh, you mean Sarawak? You know, I might be going there with my scout troop. Oh, you're lucky. It sounds like a great place. What's Chandran up to? He seems awfully busy. I think he's chatting on the ICQ. Must be someone interesting. He's been on it for hours. So when are you going? Can I come along? I really miss Rawa. Well, you can, if you enroll in the scout troop. We're going for a jamboree. What's a jamboree? It's like a camp, where you meet scouts from all over Malaysia, and there's a sing-along around the campfire. I love jamborees, but it's not confirmed yet. I haven't told my parents. Nothing much. We're just chatting about the land of the Hornbill. Land of the Hornbill. The Hornbill is the official bird of Sarawak. Hence, Sarawak is also referred to as the land of the Hornbill. It's like a camp where you meet scouts from all over Malaysia and there's a sing-along around the campfire. Sing-alongs. Sessions where people sing together as a group. Have you ever been to Sarawak? No, only to Sabah. That's quite far away, right? Well, we share a border. But Kota Kinabalu is about an hour away by plane. You know that island where the terrorists kidnapped those people? Is that in Sarawak? You mean Sipadan? No, that's off the east coast of Sabah. We were talking about James Brooke and how he started the Brooke dynasty in Sarawak. The story is that James Brooke was in Singapore when he saw a ship heading for Sarawak. Being an adventurer, he decided to jump aboard and check out the space. He helped the Sultan of Brunei put down the rebellion by the locals and he awarded bits of pieces of Sarawak until he finally got the whole of it. What? I only gave you the book yesterday. You started on it already? No, but I'm surfing the net and I've logged on this website run by the SEDC, whatever that means. State Economic Development Corporation. That's a government agency. The TDC of Sarawak also has quite an informative site. Tells you where to go and what to see. The Jamboree is in Miri. Do you know where that is? Of course, it's in the northeast. Miri is mainly an oil town. It's the gateway to Mulu Caves and Nia Caves. Oh, good. My scoutmaster is planning to take us to the Mulu Caves after the Jamboree. Have you been there? Yes, I went with my family one school holiday. There are four show caves which are easy to get to. They have laid planks on the ground which you can walk on. What's it like inside? Is it all wet and dark? They've actually done a good job lighting up those passages. I thought it would be eerie inside, but it's okay. Listen to this, Borhan. You'll like it. The DM's case's biggest attraction is the black cloud of fruit bats that emerge from the entrance at dusk and returns early in the morning. There is a two-story observation post near the entrance of the caves where you can observe this flight of the bats. Yeah, it was awesome. Suddenly the whole sky turned dark and was startled. But the guy explained that it was only the bats out to look for food at night. They returned to their caves to sleep in the day. What about the other caves? Everybody talked so much about the Mulu caves. There must be more than one. Well, it says here that Wind Caves has impressive carvings and limestone formations. I wonder how it compares to the caves just outside Ipoh. Those are quite fascinating too, and some people live in them. Oh, well, no one lives in Mulu, but the Barawan tribe lives close by. Being an adventurer, he decided to jump aboard and check out the space. Adventurer. 
someone who likes to try out new things. There are four show caves which are easy to get to. They have laid planks on the ground which you can walk on. Show caves. Caves that cater especially to tourists. Do you think they would allow us to camp in the caves? I mean, we already have our camping gear and it would sure be fun. I doubt it. They're pretty strict and I don't think they want a troop of scouts messing about inside. Hmm, this website is good. There are adventures, caving expeditions allowing you to crawl, climb and swim your way through that many caves. Oh, that sounds interesting. Maybe you'll come across some blind fish. Blind fish? Are you serious? I saw a discovery program once and there was this cave in New Zealand. The fish are blind because it's very dark in the cave and no light penetrates. They don't need to see but feel their way around. You're pulling my leg. No, I'm serious. There is such thing as blind fish. Orhan is right. There is such a thing as fish with no eyes. Nature has a way of adapting. And when you do not need a certain organ, it does away with that organ as time goes by. How far away are the Nia caves? It's probably too much to do both Nia and Mulu. But it's definitely worth a trip sometime. The book said that there is evidence of humans having inhabited the cave some 40,000 years ago. And there are rock paintings. Small canoe-like boats were discovered there. And archaeologists think that these were used as coffins. So, the Nia caves must have been a burial ground of some sort. Hmm, would be a nice place to camp overnight. I knew it. Bora and his taste for the morbid. Well, we'll be interested to hear your hair rising experiences. Well, let's change the topic. Did any of you know that we grow apples in Slovak? But you need cold weather for that. Well, it's cool enough in the Klabit Highlands for apples. That's some local trivia for you. I am sitting here and I'm hearing all this wonderful information for the first time. I don't know why we know so little about East Malaysia. Yeah, I don't think many of us could pinpoint Kuching on the map. I know that neither of my parents have visited Sabah or Sarawak. I suppose it's the airfare that deters people from visiting. It costs about 600 for a return ticket. Wow, that's a lot of money. I think I'll stick to the peninsula for now. But if you get a chance, Bohan, you should go. It's quite different over there. I will try to persuade my parents to let me. It will be the first time I've gone that far without them. I suppose if I'm with my scout troop, they won't mind. I doubt it. They're pretty strict and I don't think they want a troop of scouts messing about inside. Messing about. Disturbing the area. I knew it. Bora and his taste for the morbid. Well, we'll be interested to hear your hair raising experiences. Hair raising experiences. Scary experiences. Where your hair will stand on ends. Sarawak remains one of my favorite destinations in Malaysia. Rustic long houses. Doe-eyed maidens and charming Kuching. Let's hope Burhan gets to make a visit. And it's time to say goodbye. And here are some questions for revision.